The uncomfortable truth is that many companies today are not operating in an environmentally sustainable way. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the world must transition to net zero emissions by 2050 in order to be able to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Now, listening to these warnings, more and more we see governments setting targets to transition their local economies. And as governments are setting these targets, we are also seeing an increase in financial regulators now starting to take concrete steps to integrate climate change into their local rule books. So if you want the real economy to align to climate goals, then you need to provide clear, comparable, actionable benchmarks for the real economy to adjust to. What does environmental sustainability look like? And what do we expect in terms of your performance against a set of critical metrics? And this is where green taxonomies come in. A green taxonomy is a classification tool. It is like a dictionary that is meant to provide the market with clarity and define which economic activities are deemed environmentally sustainable, usually within the context of a country's net zero goals. Green taxonomies are not the only tool to support sustainable investment, but they're a really smart approach. Previous to the taxonomy, a company could say they had green revenue but they've decided how to determine their revenue is green. The taxonomy has a consistent definition that is science-based, that looks at each sector and determines whether or not the performance of that company within that sector aligns to these testing criteria. And so as a financial company, you can rely on it as a robust method of identifying both green revenue and green investment opportunities. The taxonomy rewards what's called transitioning, so that is performing in a way that isn't considered environmentally sustainable and moving to a way that is a lower carbon performance or where you need financing to adapt to climate change. And that for me is the really exciting part of the taxonomy tool. It gives you credit for moving towards net zero, not just performing in a green way today. Looking at the EU as an example, we have just under roughly 2,000 companies that are required to report under the taxonomy framework. Globally, there are over 40 taxonomies under development and those reporting regimes vary. So in a few years from now, we could have thousands and thousands more companies that are required to report under a taxonomy framework as regulators continue to prioritize setting up these sustainable finance regulatory regimes. The reporting requirements under the EU taxonomy regulation vary based on whether you're a financial company or a non-financial company. If you're a non-financial company, then you are required to report the number or percent of turnover, capex or opex that is aligned to the European taxonomy. If instead you're a financial company, then you are required to report the percent of underlying investments that you have that are aligned to the European taxonomy. When a financial organisation needs to report under the taxonomy, there are three main things they need to do. So the first is to collect the data from companies who do report under the taxonomy. The second is then for international companies who may not report under any taxonomy. They need to determine whether that company is aligned or not using a set of proxies or potentially a set of estimates. And the third is reporting. They need to be able to aggregate all this data and report on it in a way that their asset owner understands how environmentally sustainable the financial product is. Green taxonomies can at first seem very daunting. It is a very new way of reporting for corporates. So there may be data they haven't yet collected. They may need to organize that data and report that data in a way they've never done before. Now, if that company is a global company, the ask is much higher that they're able to consistently collect that data and consistently report. And that has been challenging, as is any change management. But once embedded in corporate practice, 
should actually by design be reasonably simple to one, do, and to two, understand what that company's environmental performance looks like in a clear and comparable way. Bloomberg offers a set of solutions where a company who is already reporting environmental metrics can see on Bloomberg whether or not they are meeting certain taxonomy test criteria, particularly those aligned to the European regime. Similarly, a company may want to assess its own performance relative to its peer group. And so Bloomberg offers a tool that allows you to see multiple global actors and how taxonomy aligned each of their performances are. The growing number of taxonomies that we see emerging globally is definitely something to watch. We do see some of them building on the EU, but some of them are also taking their own approach in terms of defining what is considered environmentally sustainable and the corresponding reporting regimes as well that are meant to accompany their local taxonomy framework. This could then potentially pose a challenge to these global market participants who now have to follow multiple taxonomy frameworks, which may not all be aligned. The really important thing in a taxonomy isn't only its report. Ideally, if a taxonomy report says that you're 5% aligned, you want to grow that to 10% aligned or 15% aligned. If I'm choosing whether to invest in company A or company B, I can understand not only how aligned they are to the taxonomy, but how near or far they are from important test criteria. I can then choose either to invest in that company or I can engage with that company relative to the testing criteria and improve the environmental performance of the company as well. The taxonomy really is a landmark piece of regulation. It's a critical tool in how policymakers want to look at, firstly, understanding the behaviour of the companies relative to environmental objectives, but secondly, really stimulating capital to flow into supporting the transition to become more environmentally sustainable. The bottom line is the decisions we make right now will be felt for generations.